American English American English Teach and learn American English In part one of this teaching tip topic, Don Bukowski will present a five-step process for building an academic writing plan and some specific examples of how to present each step in the plan. Welcome, Don. Welcome. My name is Dawn Bukowski, and thanks for tuning in to Academic Writing, Building an Academic Writing Plan. Let's get started. In part one, I'll show you five steps to building an academic writing plan for your ESL or EFL students, and I'll show you specific examples that you can use to meet those goals. Do you wonder how you can teach academic writing in a way that actually meets your students' needs? I'm going to guide you through this with five steps to academic writing. Number one, know the material. Number two, do a needs analysis and identify your goals. Number three, sequence your goals. Number four, develop interactive activities. And number five, assess student learning. Let's go to the first step, which is to know the material you'll be teaching. You can do this by talking with colleagues about their experiences and also by informing yourself about academic writing, such as through the English Teaching Forum by the U.S. Department of State. Not only can you attend conferences, but you can also read up on academic writing expectations and assignment types and requirements in different fields. The second step is to do a needs analysis. A needs analysis will allow you to identify the goals you'll have for the course. Now let's look at an example. Let's say that you are teaching high school students and they know that they should write one main idea in each paragraph and put that idea in the first sentence called the topic sentence. However, when they actually write papers, their first sentences don't reflect the main point or organization of the paragraph. What would you teach students here? One thing you could do is help students see how they can do and not just say. This means you help them practice ideas we talk about in class. For example, you might decide that they need activities where they can identify and create topic sentences collaboratively. Once you have your needs analysis done, you can identify goals for your students. The third step then is sequencing those goals. This is where you will also decide which larger goals need to be broken into smaller steps for students to practice. Let's look at an example of breaking a large goal into smaller steps. Let's say that you have that same group of high school students who are now writing a paper using three sources. They know they should use quotes or paraphrases from the sources, but they can't seem to identify which ideas to paraphrase or how to integrate those paraphrases into their own papers. Instead, they're copying sentences. What smaller steps could we create to help the students? Maybe you thought of the same smaller steps that I did. The ones that come to my mind are these four. First, focusing on reading, specifically activities to help students find information. Then, activities to help students with paraphrasing and summarizing. Third, activities to help students integrate paraphrased ideas into their writing. And finally, helping students follow a citation style guide, such as APA or MLA in the US. Once you have your goals identified and sequenced, then you can create interactive activities that match those goals. Developing interactive activities starts with training students to identify language patterns and become critical thinkers. You can do this through discovery activities, for example, asking students to examine writing in their field to decide if it includes both passive and active voice. You can also use peer response, which offers benefits such as increasing students' motivation and confidence with their writing and also evaluating their own writing. This leads us to the final step, which is assessing student learning. Assessment needs to continue through the course. Here's an example. At the beginning of the course, you can ask students to write specific goals for their writing development. Midway through the course, you can analyze their papers in order to decide how to structure future teaching. 
And at the end, you can ask students to reflect on those goals and their development. Writing assessment also includes feedback, of course. I recommend that you develop your own feedback plan. A feedback plan answers the question of how you will give students comments on their writing. I also like to tell my students my feedback plan and let them practice with the types of feedback I give. I've included my feedback plan here. Of course, each feedback plan will change depending on the class you're teaching and what your students need. My plan includes the following list. Feel free to pause the video and read it more carefully. Well, we've gone over five steps that can help you build an academic writing plan for your ESL or EFL students. I hope you found some useful tips. Thanks for joining me today. Be sure to check out part two of this series, which focuses on helping students build coherence and cohesiveness in their writing. To check out other great teaching tip videos, be sure to subscribe to our American English YouTube channel. You can find resources for teachers on the American English website by clicking on the link listed here. And if you haven't already, be sure to like us on the American English for Educators Facebook page.